So let's have a little discussion about partnerships. I met Zach through a guy named Kenny who was hired through the glass guy who fixed my windshield when I first got here. And uh, it was strictly to move furniture and the guy looked desperate for money. So I paid him 50 bucks for an hour's worth of work. And I was like, hey, thanks for coming out. I know it's far. And apparently the next time I met them thought that they were gonna get paid the same because I asked them to do two or three hours of work and they assumed it was 50 bucks an hour. And I was like, well, I was figuring 20, but uh, I paid him the 50, said, all right, good. And I was like, man, that sucks. And then I got a text message. I was like, well, you know, we should hang out, da, da, da. I was like, well, I got CNC that needs being put together. I'll pay you to help me put it together and we can hang out and great. Comes over, checks it out. It's like, hey, I ain't got time today, but just want to get eyes on it. And that was after probably 10 or 15 times of just getting pushed back. It became more of a, oh, you know, I got a life, I got problems, I got kids, I got a girlfriend who's taking care of my kids that is now pregnant with kid number four, and I got this dad in Arkansas, and I got X, Y, and Z problems, and his health problems, and my health problems, and my mental health problems, and I'm just a vet trying to get my way, and I had a business, but I something fucked up with that, and I was running with Kenny, and Kenny's the type of guy who's like, oh, well, everything so just you know. So I invited him to my house to hang out with my wife, because his wife is of similar age, her girlfriend, kids, etc. Apparently they're all homeschooled. The girlfriend doesn't have a job. She takes care of the kids. Just trying to give as much context to this. We tried to help them out. We tried to give them some knowledge on, you gotta have money to make money, earn more money. Your money's gotta work for you. I can't stay not busy. I just can't. It's socially and environmentally programmed into me and I've tried breaking it. If I could just sit around, I would. It's so cheap to live here. It's possible. I could live here for 10 years and it wouldn't matter. Problem is, when I see people like who I'm talking about, it drives me nuts that they don't do more. And I had a conversation with them numerous times about why aren't you doing more? Why aren't you at least telling people about your capability with solar, with energy, with wind, with metal, with welding, with mechanics, with glass? Oh, well, I could build you a sand tunnel and do this and do that and that, boom, 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 boom. So many types of things he could do, but nothing was ever done. And so I was like, okay, maybe it's just a misunderstood vet. I've been there before. I was a, an addict and I had so many grandiose plans and he didn't seem like an addict to me. And I've usually got a read on that. I may be wrong, I don't know. As time went on, the more times I was like, all right, here's your opportunity, take it. Oh, well, something came up. Oh, I gotta go out of town. Oh, you know, I could do that, but I just didn't. Ah, oh, you know, I was going to, but something came up. And I'm like, damn, man, if I was up for this opportunity, the, the original opportunity was, hey, come work for me three days a week. I'll teach you everything I know on X, Y, and Z. Three days a week, very, very low hours. I think it was four and a half hours a week or a day. And then uh, it'd be something like, 10, $12 an hour. But now nah, I can't do that. I gotta make like 15, 20. Okay, cool. If it's an intern thing, I can't really pay you that much because I don't know if it's gonna make any money. But what I will do, I will give you 35% of the revenue you can make from these things after you spend 30 hours learning it. You gotta be here to do the work though. He helped me build the machine and I wasn't gonna pay him. He was supposed to do it or he said that he was gonna do it so that he could use it and make money off of making signs anytime he wanted. Turns out, at the end of the weekend, he's like, well, you know, I just worked 20 hours with you. And I'm like, no, you didn't. You took off halfway through one day, kind of came and went the second day. And then you came let, late the third day and just kind of boned and pissed and did basically, he worked for like 14 hours. And I was like, okay, so you want to get paid? I was like, all right, cool. So I gave him 350 bucks and said, hopefully that helps. I never expected for him to call me again. A month later, he comes by and he says, oh, I got all this wood. It's all yours. I told you I'd bring you as much cedar as you wanted. It's all free. It's Arkansas. It's like, all right, you sure it's free? Comes in, he's like, all right, so when are we getting to work so I can get that profit split? I'm like, what, what the f I was like, you know what? I got so much going on right now. Sure, I'll renew the deal, 35%. I have an expo next week. You gotta be here. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, setup is Friday. So no, setup was Thursday. So I needed him Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, five days of work. Three days of hanging out, kick your feet up, do nothing, just kind of greet people. Sell the stuff you just made. So day one, he comes in. I think he was four or five hours late from where he said, and I thought he just wasn't coming. Cool, does nothing. Just sits and thinks and moans and bitches. It's like, oh, you know what, I'm so excited. I got so many ideas, I got to do so much stuff. Cut one sign. One sign out of the five and a half hours he was here. Stayed late into the night. 
I think it was six hours, yeah. <clears throat> Next day, he was actually right on time. I was like, all right, maybe this is it. And then it was just, you know, maybe this, that. So many different ideas, like he didn't know, but he acted like he knew so much about it. Like now he was an expert. I researched this, I did that. And I just couldn't take it. I was like, man, if you don't want to be here, you don't have to be here. He's like, oh, I'm definitely not going to take this shit as much as I've worked. I'm like, you've only been here a half a day, half a day. Oh, you know, I put in time building this, I did that. I was like, all right, well, bye. I'm trying to tell you, if you don't want to work, don't work. There's no reason for you to be here. I can do this on my own. So he stayed, bit the, just, he bit the dust, sat down, said, all right, I'm gonna work. So then I turned and I started just banging out more projects. Boards, 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 custom board, glue ups, signs, cut. He came up with two, which were the Make My Day Punk and his family sign. And then I came up with a veteran's own business sign because all of my businesses say that on our websites and our advertisements. And so it's one of those things that we usually push it. The problem was, then it was, oh, let's epoxy this. Okay, let me do a 3D rendering on this sign. The 3D rendering sign alone took four and a half hours. And then his sanding and prepping of that sign, because he it had his name on it, was so meticulous and over-engineered for no reason that that took him a full day to make that sign out of the three days we now had. And then for two days coming up to the expo, it became more of a, well, I got this going on, I got that going on, and, and how are we going to work out this business? And, you know, what am I going to own? What am I going to do? What am I going to be working for? And I'm like, well, there is no business yet. There is no. You got to sell two grand. Sell two grand. And then I'll put money in to make it a business. Show me there's something there. If you can sell it, great. Tell me why. It seemed like his work just stopped. And I was like, okay, well, after the expo, I'm never going to see him again. It doesn't really matter. During the expo, not one wood piece sold. I sold quite a few after the expo, but that's a separate matter. Now, during the expo, all he had to do was go out there and be like, hey, you like wood, whatever, just Google how to sell wood. It's very easy. It's very kinetic to people. It just, it gets absorbed, distributed. You understand it, it's nature. Something he just didn't care. I was having my own bad weekend. Me and my wife were fighting about something petty. And uh, so he didn't want to do the work of like selling the store stuff along with the wood stuff. And he was like, oh, well, this is selling more. I guess I'm just going to sell it. I'm like, yeah, I can't pay you to sell it. So if you want to focus on the wood, do that. It was going to sell anyway. And I was selling the shit out of the body butters, the soaps, the detergent-free lotions, all of it. And we sold out of a lot of stuff. And I'm proud of my wife. Even though she didn't sell it, I, I'm telling you, it's quality shit. Shopmadebylove.com. It is quality shit. Now, when the expo was done, I expected this man to ask me for cash. I had prepared to pay him a hundred bucks a day. You know, I had even paid for lunches, breakfasts, coffees, drinks, all of it. I think we spent 150 bucks on just food alone. And then it became, I'm losing my voice by the way, cause I'm getting sick again. I don't know if it's the house or like, there's gotta be something in the air that's getting me. He didn't say anything, he just left and didn't show up. He just dropped all the stuff in my garage. My wife said he just kind of slammed it down, broke the wine glasses and left. I was like, hey man, you forgot your sign. No response, no nothing. Three days later, we get a call for a custom job that I had mentioned in a previous video. I text him, I'm like, you wanna go out there? You wanna give me the information? I'll go out there. What do you wanna do? He's like, I'm already out there. Turns out he had the information he had scheduled privately with the client. I had already briefed him over the weekend and signed him into our Square account. So he knew how to do invoices, how to write those invoices and bill those invoices with and without tax for labor and materials. I also input the cost of materials for the average wood. Can anyone tell me why he came back with 400 or what was it, $200 in cash? The original quote was 450 to 500. The new quote was 400 cash for double the work. Not only did he undercut the price, he apparently stayed there for three hours. Just chit-chatting, three hours plus. Took a couple of pictures of their woodwork that they had in their house, said that they were basically collectors of all wood, all art, anywhere they could get it. And they didn't pay top dollar. We've got one picture of the stove, kind of blurry. I asked him for measurements, height above where the burners are, dimensions to and from the locations we can put the wood, if they wanted handles or not, what type of handles any groove cuts, any special requests. Get it all there. Nail it down so we can order the materials. I can go by the board foot, give an estimate. He calls me, he says, hey, man, I don't got that much money. They only want to spend 400 bucks. I'm like, 400 bucks, I'd have to have red oak all the way around the border. It's a cheaper material. It's only $5.90 a board foot. So we got the dimensions and they're only getting a little bit of dark walnut. It's going to be 
checkered throughout it. Dimensionally, it will work with inch and a half squares. The fun part was we agreed on the design. They drew the design themselves. They approved it, decoded it, approval through me. Quote, down payment was $200. So I think. He shows up to my store with $200 in cash and says, they don't want to pay taxes. They don't want to pay fees. They just want to pay $400 and that's it. You know, this is the first job. This is exactly how it works in Oklahoma. You get your job. It's off to the side. It won't be through the business. It'll be fine. I'm like, oh, okay. Anything goes wrong. It's not on my name. You know, it's not much. There's no business header. There's no tag, no receipt, no nothing. So I'm like, okay, what's the deadline? I told them 10 days, two weeks. I'm like, okay, cool. So when are you going to be able to get it done? He's like, okay, well, I'll, you get the wood and I'll get it done next week. He's like, okay. So I had left town for a couple of things for that weekend because uh, he had went on a Tuesday. The next weekend I was gone. And I was like, hey, everything is in the shop ready for you. Everything. A, B, and C, get it done. You got like four days that I'll be gone. You can get it done at any time. They're open hours, everything. It was Easter. He's like, oh, no, no, I'm not getting it done. You're not going to be there. I'm not going to do the work when you're not there. Why would I do that? And I'm like, but that was the deal. I put in $12,000. Before the materials, before the f***ing round time, 12000 in hardware. You've put in not $1. Not $1. And he wants 35% of the revenue of any of the jobs he brings in or helps bring in or makes. That's the, the deal. You just have to work on it. I don't, the reason I need you is I don't have the time. Why would I pay you for anything else except for your time? On average, you can make 50 bucks an hour. The, easily. Some of these jobs I can do in two hours and make 400 bucks. That's $100 an hour, $200 an hour in some cases because of materials. So the problem was he didn't understand that. And then I was like, well, I'll help you. I'll point out what you can do, but I'm not gonna be there doing the work for you because otherwise I don't need you, sorry. And he threw a fit that I was in control or being egotistical or an asshole or a sucker. And uh, yeah, I'm all those things, but not in this instance. In this instance, I'm the guy who asked you to do your job, simply. I sent him one text message after I realized I was just done. Like a bad relationship, I just don't care. I don't need him and it was not gonna be worth the headache that this so-called tolerant or this honorable person was gonna bring to my businesses. A well-known established honorable person. So, unfortunately, he turned out to be a two-faced It's sad because I really liked the guy. I saw a lot of myself and potential in him, except his worst enemy is himself, his care, his drive. I think that uh, he's just got a lot of shit going on, having almost four kids and having that entire burden of a household, even though his daily or monthly bills, his words were $1,600. If I could live with an overhead of $1,600, I would never be home. I'd work one day and I'd fly off the next and I'd work one day and fly off the next, I wouldn't have to do anything. If anyone here in the comments does not know how to make $1,600 a month, please comment below. I'll let you know. There's, there's a million ways. Shit, drive to San Francisco. I can guarantee you $1,200 on the day you land in, in San Francisco. That's all, just show up. They're giving out money. What I didn't expect was the response when I did not care to talk to him. So April 5th, he showed up and said, uh, looking for Easter baskets. He said he would, he was grabbing some at Walmart. I was like, yeah, look for Easter baskets. I'm going to Dollar Tree, grab some things. And then he said he was gonna be there in the next day to start the job. That's what it was. And then he told me Liz, his girlfriend was hurting, making her go to the hospital. And he sent me an image of the rendering he drew. And then Friday, the next day, I was like spending the weekend in OKC till Monday. So if you get the time on the weekend to glue up, I've cut the boards to 30 inch lengths for the project. Maybe strip them, create the glue up pattern. Then next week we can inlay the red oak center and work on the outer cuts. That's me telling him, hey, I prepped these boards to 30 inch lengths. Also, the paper didn't have the dimensions for the inner allowance. So send me a photo of the top of the stove so I can try and Siri measure that. Happy Easter, bud. Like the Apple measure. And he says, how can I access the shop? I can spend time on it next week. Easter Sunday is the best to do a rendering so we can lay it out properly. I said, I cut the boards to 30 inch lays so they can have an open normal, they have open normal hours tomorrow to come by. I can leave a key in the mailbox. Phone died while watching the new Shazam movie. Kids loved it. Oak is the same thickness as walnut. Just about, or I say just about. May need to plane a bit, then just cut to strips. If you want to wait till Monday, it's cool. From there, we need to glue up and figure out if we're inlaying the red oak or domino attaching the centerpiece. 
huh, this is a man who's supposed to know everything, everything about woodworking. So the centerpiece you had them design on the board, if either we install an inlay or if we glue up a 16 inch block makes no difference, just need to figure that out. Thought you said checkerboard should go all the way. I said it would be cheaper and easier if we did checkerboard, but he had promised this inlay, which is more work, but also cheaper for the wood, more convenient for time not cheaper for the wood to do a checkerboard. He said, that would be easiest, but paperwork had the centerpiece, so I didn't know if that was still the plan because he was supposed to confirm with the customer. The walnut is three fourths, question mark. Yes, I had nothing else. The oak is thicker than the walnut, he says, at 9.59 a.m. Neither has been run through the planer yet. No response. Saturday at 11.07, I get that. I was hoping to close. They were close to the same, so the waste and labor is minimized. There's no extra labor. It just goes through the planer. Throw it through the planer a couple of times, makes it even after the glue up. You could have here and here, the planer will make it here. It'll be fine. I promise it'll be fine. Can you measure the thickness of the red oak? Yeah, we get some time. This is Tuesday. My bank account was just robbed. Okay, get the model range cover on your mobile app with code AD73. D blah, 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 rendering I did. The border can be thicker on the top if it's red oak, of the red oak is thicker. And he's redesigned this entire rendering to be a solid dark oak walnut design. She wants the design with walnut border. Let me know when you have time to get together and get it glued up. So he's talked to the customer. Again, redesigned the project. We've already bought the materials. This is the day where, like I said, I've already been robbed. He doesn't know that. So I said, she's not gonna get a walnut border. Cost will go up. I hope you're not discussing the design with her and not going over it with me first because the material is already at 220 with nine board feet of walnut and nine of red oak. And it's not just wood. That's just wood, not incidentals. I got a million other things going on today. So if you want to come down here and do the work, that's fine. But she's got nine board feet of walnut at 18 each, and nine of red oak at $6 each a board foot already cut to strips from it. From there, you can design and get your hands on first before making her any promises. And he goes into a rant and says, I discussed the design with, in, with the customer. She will pay for what she wants. Customer satisfaction is very important. It's a 28 by 20 piece, which isn't hard or expensive with two inch squares. If you think you can do this better yourself, be my guest. You cut the straps without cutting a design. I said strips once, but said I cut them to 30 inches a million times before that. That was your mistake. Our mistakes can't be passed on to our customers. Practice communication and patience because mine is wearing quite thin with you. <sighs> I was already having a shit day. So after he says that his Patience is getting thin. I said, listen, this isn't gonna work if you're gonna make decisions with the customer without me, without the scope of the pricing on materials and job. I get we're not trying to make an arm and a leg here because we said we were going to do it for cheap so that we can get repeat customers, word of mouth, et cetera, it's the first job. But if she wants another $60 in wood, she's gonna have to raise her price. We both know that. The design is good. That's not the issue. I appreciate him rendering a design. The problem is we don't want to make any promises and not be on the same foot. Otherwise, it won't work at all. You haven't seen the strips or the cuts because you haven't come to see it. You hadn't been here at all. The wood isn't even prepped yet. Don't get pushy with me about it. I'm happy to deal direct with the customer so she can get a factual idea of the cost versus build. Send me her information. I can do that. Haven't set a price with you on material because neither of us know how much raw wood it will take because of imperfections, knots, etc. Let me just set aside real quick. Knots, strips, you can choose the wood you want when you get it from the, uh, the lumber yard. You can pick without knots. You can say no to the wood that looks ugly. You don't just have to take every piece but he doesn't know that because as i'm finding out in these text messages he has no idea about what nothing he also has not been here since he dropped off the deposit a week and a half earlier the goal is to give the customer what they want i don't need to see the strips you cut that is irrelevant without a design that customer approves she approved a design now we go to the material he approved a design a week and a half ago and i was given a paper design signed by the customer she approved design now we go to material planning and coordination will save money i have not settled a price with her just a target. You need a big reality check, not me. Control is your problem. I'm getting quite fed up with it. I said, we had a design and measurements. I don't know what you're talking about, but the wood's here and you're free to work on it. Like I said before, I cut the raw material down to 30 inch strips. As a part of the prep, I haven't done anything else. You're assuming I want control. I want to be on the same page. You're not present for the typing nor the reading of the pages, bud. You have a project and a design, finish, cut, do whatever you'd like. The hours next door are posted and I will let you do your thing. I've got more going on than arguing over someone not being involved. Our customer is ecstatic about the project. She has uh, money and a love of beautiful woodworking. She is local and will bring us thousands in sales. I've done great work so far making 
this goes smooth as silk. I've done, I don't have time to be babysat by you or talk down to ever again. Then get off my back. I don't need my hand held. This is our venture. You don't have time. I'll do it all, but not for 35% equity. Got to figure that out too. Let's put this aside. Never was he going to get ownership equity of 35%. It was going to be profit sharing 35%. Anything he sold, anything he made. I was going to contract that with him. Hey, everything that we sold, whatever it was that you had your hand in, any custom orders, et cetera, website sales, 35% as long as you did the work. That's crazy because there are jobs that we could have done that were $10,000, $15,000. He didn't have to pay for materials. Just damn. And he didn't have to put a dollar into the business. Not a dollar. Not a dollar. A fucking startup business. I'm prepared to work on this together until we reach an agreement on the business end, like we agreed already. Pretty obvious he doesn't need me in there while your business is open. Let me know when you have time to build the things we need to make this go smooth. Sled for the table saw. Already fixed and bought a week and a half earlier. Dust control. Already fixed and bought two weeks earlier, etc. Sunday or Saturday, he texts me. Do you have time to work on that range cover? I just said, after all those messages, I wasn't gonna talk to him like a girlfriend that would ghost me, I ghosted him. I just, I can't deal with people like this. Today, if you don't have time to do the range cover, let me know. I'll need her $200 deposit back so I can refund her. This is where I asked my wife what I can do and how to do it. I said, send my details to the customers or send me theirs. There's nothing to discuss. I'll wait for the customer to contact the business end and find out what they want to proceed with the materials I've already purchased. Feel free to keep the money you took out of the deposit. The rest is completely up to them. I'll handle directly with them as well as I should have in the first place. This will be my final correspondence. He stated, you gave me $40. The 40 was his cut of the $200 deposit because I knew what the cost of materials was gonna be and he needed gas money. You were choosing no longer to work together and I don't blame you. Given the text above, I shouldn't have texted anything and just let it roll off because I can't work with somebody who does not what you did anyway. You are an arrogant sometimes. I can be too. I was taking care of a customer and you seem to find problems with everything. I was doing my job we agreed upon. She is happy and excited and I don't know how she will respond. I'll send her your information. I'll just need to call her first and let her know I can't make her peace for her. He wasn't ever going to make it. That's the problem. He wanted me to make it. He did not want the work done by him. He wanted to send me the renderings, make sure that I was working on it. That He wanted to flip the script because he saw that during the entire time that I was doing the, the prep for the signs, I did all the work. During the expo, I did all the work because it's my business at that point and he has no hand in it. And I was excited to do all this for the expo. And still, he got to make some money off of it. So I was like, oh shit, you know, I just had to be there. I didn't really have to do anything. I just, a little sanding, boom, a couple ideas, boom. And so I didn't respond at all. I told him, no correspondence. I'll have to set up a time with you to get my materials and tape measure. And that was just now, literally. 7.13, it's 7.21. Moral of the story is, this man is trying to game the system without putting a hand, or keep his hands in the cookie jar, without putting his hands into the oven first. Doesn't want to put the work in to enjoy the spoils. You know what I mean? I, I don't get how some people can be so lazy, so arrogant. They don't want to sweat. He claims that he, uh, he does so much for so many things and it is what it is. I just, it's a sad day when you see somebody try and take advantage of a free opportunity, a free lunch for say, and they still try and f you for dinner and dessert. They want it all. All I wanted was the customer's invoice and for him to show up and do the job. But there was just a million excuses. I could show you the last month of text messages with him just postponing and kicking and ignoring calls. It was pulling teeth to deal with him before and I gave him a second chance. And uh, I'm just not the one to put up with your shit. Sorry, I don't know who does, but if you treat anybody that way, they should ghost you as well. Just saying, it ain't worth the time. So I'm gonna glue up these boards for my projects Still waiting on his customer, I'm assuming. So best case scenario, he used a fake business name instead of giving me and my wife's business name because it was supposed to be under Love Family because we had not had the Love's Design Studio business, which now that you know, this woodworking business is called Love's Design Studio. And uh, it's a nod to a studio art decor, whatever I want to make for my house and build for myself and all the cool shit I'm going to learn. You're in the beginning of what my mental clay pot is and we're going to see it unfold. Over the next few years, maybe I build my own building. I don't know. Maybe I build my own house. There's a lot I can do. After because the, the deal is my anniversary is tomorrow and all this is going to be done by Oh my God. <laughs> so. I wish I knew that. I had heard he came out, he was supposed to get just the dimensions so we could give you a quote. It wasn't even supposed to take me. 
There was nothing about him. Give him a quote, we'll do payment later, it'll be fine. Well, and he just, he likes some of the other stuff. He said, well, hey, I could use this as an idea, and that's why I said, go ahead and take pictures of anything you want to, so. He's just the guy who wants to be a business owner, but can't get things straight. And so it turned into a big back and forth with me and him. I'm like, hey, if you can't do any of this, you don't want to do any of this, or if you want that much control, you need to be on your own. And so I was like, send the customer business info. I wished in the back of my mind, I was like, well, if it goes long enough, the customer's going to come by. 